the Great Mongol Empire. You might know them as the bad guys in Disney's Mulan, or as the largest land empire of all time, ruling over 12 million square miles. Either way, they have an interesting history that we will dive into. But before we begin, I want to thank you for watching Ben Explains, and remember to smash that subscribe button down below. Now let's get into it. Before the Mongol Empire, there were several pastoral nomadic tribes who specialized in herding and lived in super cool yurts in the Central Asian steppe, just south of Siberia. These people were shamans, believing in nature spirits, and women held relatively high social status compared to other parts of the world at this time, and could even be the leaders of tribes or clans. So good job, Mongols, for being ahead of the game in that department. Mongols for many generations grew up learning to ride horseback and shoot bows, making them incredible hunters and later extraordinary warriors as well. Now, we can't talk about the Mongol Empire without first talking about a dude named Temujin, who was born in 1162 and had a difficult, violent upbringing. People have begun to recognize Temujin's prowess on the battlefield, and when his wife was kidnapped by a rival clan, he formed strategic alliances to get her back which he did, while gaining the respect from others as he did so. At this point, Temujin believed it was his destiny to unite the Mongol clans and then conquer the world. Temujin began conquering rival clans and was able to do so thanks to some incredible military advancements. First, he promoted soldiers and leaders based on their merit, not on their birthright or social status. He also would scatter the soldiers of those he conquered into his own ranks, so that there was never enough of them in one unit to rise up and revolt. He also adopted military techniques such as stirrups, composite bows, leather armor, and gunpowder. And he developed military techniques such as arrow storms, hit and run tactics, delayed sieges, and psychological warfare. All of these led to no one being able to stand in his way, and in 1206, he united the Mongol tribes to create the Mongol Empire and was given the name Genghis Khan, or the Universal Ruler. Once Genghis Khan united the Mongols, he adopted a written language and created a law code. He also made a centralized military based on a light and coordinated cavalry, giving his soldiers up to 16 horses so that they could travel far distances very quickly. The Mongols first set their sights on northern China, where they would go village to village and give the option surrender or we will slaughter everyone, which they usually did. And once they conquered northern China, they went east, conquering most of Asia and expanding into the Middle East and Europe, and managed to do all of this with no more than 130,000 soldiers. Once the Mongols conquered a land, they generally left the people alone, just sending some local magistrates to collect taxes. They gave complete religious freedom, which was unheard of up until this point. They connected the East and the West by encouraging trading and would provide protection to traders. They also had the first international postal system, helping connect and globalize the world for one of the first times ever. After Genghis Khan's death in 1227, his son, Ogadai, became the next great Khan. He further pushed his territory into Europe and the Middle East and put into place an efficient tax system. While in the West, the Mongols got the nickname Horsemen of the Devil as they continued to conquer land. It was said that the Mongols fought Japanese samurai in the Far East and mounted knights in the Far West, with neither one of them being aware of the other's existence. Fun fact time! Did you know that today there are more than 16 million direct descendants of Genghis Khan? Which must make for quite the chaotic family reunion. The Mongols also engaged in biological warfare by catapulting the severed heads of those with the bubonic plague onto their enemies, which would probably qualify as some sort of health code violation today. Okay, let's get back to it. In 1260, due to title disputes, the Mongol Empire split into four khanates, kind of like four separate kingdoms. There was the Golden Horde in Eurasia and Eastern Europe, the Il Khanate in the Middle East, the Chagatai Khanate in Central Asia, and most notably the Wan Dynasty in China, led by Kublai Khan, who became one of China's great emperors, and whose lineage lasted until 1368. 
The fall of the Mongol Empire was ultimately due to poor succession laws and a tendency for the Mongol people to assimilate into the cultures of the people they govern. And by just 1368, all of the Khanates had fallen, most by civil wars, which ended the Mongol Empire. Although the Mongol Empire only lasted 150 years, it will go down in history as the largest land empire of all time being responsible for connecting the East and the West, reigniting the Silk Road, and for having possibly the greatest military of all time. Thanks for watching Ben Explains, and if you liked this video, go ahead and click that thumbs up, smash that subscribe button, and if you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, comment them down below. And if you're wondering what you should watch next, why don't you try this video right here.